Hello and welcome to MB Tech. My name is Matthew Bingham and today we're going to go over actually setting up PFSense. Uh, basically it is a router uh, that you can connect directly to your internet and that for you can, way you can have a faster uh, internet connection. Um, as I mentioned previous in some of my other ones I actually have a USG. I was limited to the bandwidth that I could have from it uh, because I did have gigabit to uh, my house and I was only getting uh, right around like 85 meg to 100 and so meg. Uh, this allowed me to get much higher bandwidth um, therefore, I'm going to show you how to set it up or how I set it up initially. This is just the basic install of PFSense. There's a lot more you can do with it, and we'll get into that a little bit more. But I just wanted to show you the uh, actual uh, beginning installation. Uh, first off, you're going to want to go to the PFSense website and go to their download uh, site. And then from there, you want to get the uh, latest stable version, which is 2.60. And then from there, you're going to select your architecture. Uh, the architecture that I uh, have for the system that I use is a... Uh, a miniest form, I'm probably going to say it wrong. Um, the GK41 is what I actually uh, have and what I'm installing on. Uh, I did get it from Amazon previously. Um, I, this is not a you know recommendation and stuff like that. I'm just saying this is the, the system that I use and I'm, I'm very happy with. Uh, but if you go to Amazon, for some reason it says Kufun. Um, but as you can see here, the main reason why I got this box is because it has the double uh, LAN ports that you can set up as a WAN and a LAN. I've also used this for my home assistant, and it seems to work decent for that as well. Uh, therefore, you can set up different uh, set network segments. You can have one for your like your main network. You have another one that you set up for your video cameras for your uh, home assistant and stuff like that. that when you set that up, um, it also has two different display outputs. You know, HDMI or Display Port. Uh, once this is set up, I don't even use the HDMI. I just go to the actual web interface uh, for that to set it up. Um, so once again, uh, download your PFSense. Uh, you, the one that I use is actually the USB memory stick installer. Uh, I use the console of VGA. You can select serial. Um, I would recommend VGA. And then you know, the closest to me, and there's only two, there's Austin and Frankfurt and Singapore. Um, so download that. Uh, once that's downloaded, uh, you can go to any type of imager that you like to use. I personally use Raspberry Pi. Uh, imager, I have no issues with it. It's worked great and fantastic for everything that I do. Um, I know some people use Rufus. Uh, there's other ones out there that you can use as well. I think there's WinImager. Uh, some people actually use, uh, you know, other other ones as well. But like I said, it's, it's up to you, your preference for that, to get it onto a USB device. Uh, so once that's done, just uh, kick off your Raspberry Pi Imager. And once your Raspberry Pi Imager is up and running, you just select OS. Here you're actually going to say Use Custom. And then from Custom... Uh, and you can go to my downloads, and there's PFSense uh, memory, so we select that. And then you choose your storage, um, which is going to be the uh, USB device uh, for that. So you select that, and then you click right. Say yes to that. And it will continue and download that uh, to the USB stick. And then from there, we'll actually take that SD card out, stick it into, into our uh, small form factor router that we're going to be using, and then once it's on that small form uh, router, then we'll actually set up PFSense, uh, which we'll go through that here in just a minute after this is finished up. I usually always let it go through the verify. Um, when that does happen, it just makes sure that you have a complete uh, good copy. It does like a CRC check on that to determine if it's good or not. I've had some SD cards that have gone bad, and usually the ones that have gone bad, I'll get an error here. So right now it says that everything has been uh, you know, written to the USB drive, you can remove the SD card. That means everything has been uh, perfectly uh, copied over and verified. Uh, from there, you hit continue. And then, like I said, we're just going to uh, pop out the SD card, install it into the uh, form factor that I've got, and then we'll go through the install process. And it should boot up onto the SD card. Okay, now we are actually into the actual... Uh, setup of the PFSense. Uh, here is just the licensing and trademarks. So we will say accept to that. 
and we're going to install pfSense. So we'll say OK to that. Uh, we'll continue with the default key map. Uh, guided, we'll do actually the unify. Here we'll do the auto UFS unify. Uh, we want to use entire disk. And we'll say yes to this as well. And commit. And it's uh, partitioning the tables and it's initializing the file system. Now it's going through the install. And it's showing our overall progress. It says that the installation is now finished. And we do not need to make any manual uh, modifications. So we'll say no. And we're going to reboot. It's going through and starting and initializing. Um, so now it's wanting to know your two different links that you have, as well as uh, what you're going to be setting up. Um, so here it says, do you have VLANs that need to be set up first? Here I'm actually going to answer no to. If you do have VLANs, you can set that up. You can actually set up VLANs later uh, as well. So what we're going to do now, it says, should VLANs be set up now? I'm going to put no. And then now it wants to know what is the WAN interface, name or A for auto detection. So for this system here, we've got RE0 and RE1. Uh, so what we'll do here is, is we'll actually say uh, RE0. And now it wants to know what uh, the LAN interface is. So the LAN interface is going to be RE1. So now it shows you what they are. RE0 is going to be WAN. RE1 is going to be LAN. And do you want to proceed? Yes. So here we can see that our WAN got an IP address of 192.168.100.103. Okay, so we can see here that our WAN is on RE0. Our IP address on there is 192.168.100.103. And that our LAN, or our internal, is 192.168.1.1.24. Uh, uh, so once we have that, we basically are set up, and we're ready to go. And from here, we can actually go into the uh, web configurator and then from the web configurator we can actually uh, set up you know different ports set up uh, all, all different information so what we're going to do now is actually switch back to our pc and we're going to go to our internal ip address that it gave us 192.168.1.1 and that brings us to our administrator login so for pfSense uh, here it's going to be admin and pfSense is our actual password um, definitely want to change that so this is warning the admin account password is set to default value change the password and user manager so we're actually going to do that so here's our user manager we've got admin and then our password and our password so we're going to change that to a password that we want it to be and we're going to click save for that and we're also going to add a user and this is going to be your user that you want to be your admin give it a password and what we want to do also is put this in the admins group um, so when it goes here to actual groups uh, we've got all users and system administrators we're going to edit that and we're going to add MB Tech to our members of our admin group and click save uh, what that will do is allow us to to be an administrator on the box itself so first off we're going to log in as our new user make sure that that works everything looks good there 
So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to go into this and go into our users. And now we've had this admin, we're actually going to edit that. And we are going to disable that this user cannot log in. And we're going to save that. So now our admin is disabled and all we have is our current user that we've used that is going to be the administrator of this site. Uh, from here, as you can see in systems, uh, there's quite a bit of information here. It's kind of uh, interesting, at least I think it is. Uh, here it actually says that, uh, you know, the name, what I'm logged in as a user, PFSense, what type of device I have, vendor, uh, release. It looks like there's a newer release out, which is uh, says is, is not, this system is on the latest. So I'm sorry, we are on the latest version. Um, tells you the CPU, how much usage we got, temperature, you know, all that kind of neat information, I think, for the most part. Uh, how much we're actually using, which is very little. Um, over here, we can uh, uh, actually see where what our WAN and what our LAN IP addresses are. Uh, like I said, I'm going to destroy this afterward. I'm really not worried uh, about, you know, giving out these IP addresses. These are all internal uh, to this. Uh, so then we've got our firewall services. And right out of the box, I'll be honest with you, you can leave it as is and, you know, you'll be uh, you'll be protected because if you actually go into the firewall rules, you can see what those are um, in our rules here. Uh, so it's got RFC that blocks private networks and reserve uh, not assigned to uh, INA. So it blocks that information. You know, our LAN as well allows us to uh, access this port here. Normally what I do is I actually change the, the web interface to a, a different port uh, just for security reasons. Uh, it's got set up an anti-lock rule on those um, as well. Um, and like I said, we got our WAN and our floating. Uh, so from here, we can see that our status is uh, you know, pretty good. We got our traffic graphs as well. Um, right now, I've only got one system on here. It's actually the system that I'm making this recording from uh, that's accessed on here. So there's really not a lot uh, when it comes to that. We can look at our DHCP leases. Um, we can see we've got a LAN interface of 192.168.1.100. And if I actually uh, look on here, there's the name of my computer. There's the IP address. If I actually go here, do an IP config, you can see that I'm 192.168.1.100. 100. So that is the only system that's connected to this. I'll be setting up some more uh, stuff on here. This is more of just like a little lab uh, environment. So I don't have a lot of stuff on there right now, but I'm going to be adding more stuff. Um, I've got multiple routers. This is just setting up PFSense, the base, and what you need to do to get it up and running. It's pretty straightforward and pretty easy. Uh, from there, we'll go into some more modifications and we can add some more uh, stuff to your, uh, your main board here. I mean, you can add uh, different. Uh, items to your dashboard you know so here you can actually go in and you can say that you want to have uh, you know your traffic graphs so you can add traffic graphs um, there's your traffic graphs now here uh, you might not want you know the services and support so you can you can delete that one um, so now we just got our land and WAN uh, that information so everything looks you know pretty nice and neat uh, for that uh, again this is just the very base setup um, just wanted to go through that and get that up and running uh, for you guys uh, that are interested in PFSense. Uh, we are running the 2.6 release, um, which is the latest one that you can get from them. Um, you know, it, it's a, a good piece of uh, software that you can install on, on a system and, you know, you can be up and running in, you know, a matter of 10 minutes. And uh, you're safe and secure with the uh, default settings. Uh, you can make it more secure. You can actually add more uh, information to it, uh, more... Uh, you know, interfaces, dashboards, uh, you can do VPNs, you can do IPsec tunnels. Um, you got all sorts of different services that you can do. Uh, like I said, uh, firewalls, traffic shapers, virtual IPs, uh, virtual interfaces. You can do VLANs. Uh, you can do all sorts of stuff. I just wanted to show you the basics, though, and uh, that's pretty much it. Again, my name is Matthew Bing with MB Tech. I hope you enjoyed this uh, video on setting up uh, PFSense 2.6. And uh, we'll see you again soon. Thank you.